first. In January, Theresa May's Brexit deal was crushed by 230 votes. Last week, it was defeated by 149, so she still needs 75 MPs to change their minds and back her deal if it's going to get through. Well, our next guest quit the cabinet so that she could vote against the deal. But might she now change her mind? Estimate fame. thank you very much for being with us. Good morning. So are you going to be voting for Theresa May's deal? Yes, because the whole, uh, the rules have all changed. Before last week, there was a choice of this deal or no deal. And we'd all stood on a manifesto and I believe that no deal was better than a bad deal. And I still believe Theresa May's deal is a bad deal. But after the votes in the House last week, that isn't the option facing us anymore. No deal has been removed. The Article 50 will be extended. The date has removed. So the choice before us is this deal or no Brexit whatsoever. And to not have Brexit, you go against the democratic vote of the people. So government and parliament have connived to fundamentally uh, undermine Brexit. At the same time, I'm just trying to get my head around this. You just said that Theresa May's deal is a bad deal. Yes. You literally resigned from cabinet so you could vote against it. And now you're going to change your mind on it. Because, as I said, the votes before us are very different. When I resigned, there was still a chance to A, get a better deal, because no deal was on the table, which is your negotiating strategy, or there would be no deal, which is what we said, what we stood on our party manifesto. However, last week, the government, Theresa May, the government and parliament conspired to take no deal off the table. So the choice before us now is this deal, her bad deal, remains a bad deal, or no Brexit whatsoever. Or an extension to, in which she could get another deal. No, because she's taken no deal off the table. So if that was part of your negotiating strategy, as anybody who does negotiations know, she's taken that off. She's absolutely weakened her hand. So that is what we're left with. Those are the choices that lay before us. And I, as somebody who does believe in Brexit, Obviously, most of Parliament doesn't. We've still got 75% of MPs in the House who don't believe in Brexit, have never reconciled with what the democratic vote of the people is. So if you actually want to stand up for democracy, stand up for Brexit, we will then be forced, holding our nose. This is not a position I'd want to be in. It certainly wouldn't be a position I'd expect for the Prime Minister, who has said over a 100 times, we will not delay the date, and she marched through and has delayed the date, and equally stood on a manifesto that said no deal was better than a bad deal, and all of that changed last week in the House. So how many other um, Conservative Brexiters do you think are in the same position as you, prepared to hold their noses and vote for this deal? Well, you said the key word there is they are Brexiteers. So they know, not only are they Brexiteers, they are Democrats. So A, we believe in the people and the vote, and two, we believe in Brexit. And so what we're going to have to do now is, as I say, holding our nose, vote for it, and then look at so Brexit being a staged process. Yeah. Um, well, there will be various groupings of people. So there will be people who will say, I will vote for it because uh, we believe Brexit. There will be a cohort who, of course, will wait for the DUP. What are they going to do? Because, of course, this is about the union as well. And there will be some people who will say, absolutely not. You know, we have been betrayed and we won't come out. But this is where you've got to say, do you stay on total purity and then lose Brexit altogether? Or are we going to go for Brexit? And my view now would be Brexit will have to be in a multi-stage process. It's not a one uh, decision, it will now be, and the next phase is very important for Brexit. So a rough estimate of the people who could be persuaded. I know you say that there's these three groups. We know that there's some who, whatever happens, are not going to vote for the deal. But how many do you think could be persuaded? Is it enough to get the deal over the line? Um, what you said at the top of the show, I believe, is still the case. To get the um, Brexit or this deal over the line would require Labour MPs as well. It will need other people and not just Conservatives, yes. Um, you've spoken quite disparagingly about um, some Remainers, if you like it, in, in Parliament. Um, but at the same time, they voted for the deal. It's the people such as yourselves who voted against the deal before, which is the reason that we're having the delay in the first place. So they're not really trying to frustrate the will of the people, are they? No, they were trying to have a very soft Brexit. They were also pushing for a second referendum. But they were trying I to have saw, Theresa May's Brexit. They were trying to actually make it happen. Which on our party manifesto is a bad deal, as we know. And we always said no deal was better than a bad deal. Most of us wanted, and as I said when I was last on the show, that Theresa May could have gone back 
She could have removed the backstop and she could have said this 39 billion is not paid for nothing, but actually get a free trade agreement with her. By people not pursuing that line to get what was best for the country, they have left us with a bad deal. And hence Brexit now will have to be on a uh, staged sort of process to get out. And what people will be asking for is those feeble negotiators to go because they cannot take us forward to the next stage. And because there has been a weakening of the first stage, the withdrawal, the next stage, which is our future agreement, is like a, a, a much stiffer hill to climb because what should have been an easier part, as I said, through frustration, via government, through the collapse of collective responsibility, through the collapse of dif uh, di uh, discipline within the party machinery and basically MPs not wanting the will of the people to succeed. We have now got to have a very difficult second stage to get the future deal. You said there that some of the feeble negotiators, in your words, should go. Absolutely. Does that include Theresa May? And for the time being, uh, it has to be the team that is doing the core negotiating. It will also have to be to get discipline back within a cabinet. People it's led who, by the Prime Minister, that team. And it is led by the Prime Minister. So she will have to decide what she is going to do. But there will be calls for her now uh, because of what she did last week, which, remember, she said over 100 times that we would be leaving come what may on the 29th of March. And then... She and the team uh, walk through a lobby extending that date. Do you so think she has would... made life very difficult for herself. And her cabinet ministers, by defying collective responsibility, have made life very difficult for the prime minister. And that's what now she's got to look at. Has she got discipline in the government? Would it help her deal to get through if she laid out a timetable for when she's going to quit? That's what some have suggested. Mm. And she will have to think about that herself. As I said, she's got to look at the fact when collective responsibility collapses like that, who is the voice of government? The government should only have one voice, so the country knows what we stand for, so the world knows what we stand for. So when you have your team not abiding by that and not doing the honourable thing, I didn't agree. So they should have quit. Then. They should have resigned. And really, they are making the Prime Minister's position very dubious. Her cabinet is doing that to her. I just wanted to have a look at something you told me last time we were on mm -hmm. the programme. This is, this is what you um, said about running for the leadership. If people ask me, then of course you'd give it serious concern and do it if people ask me. So have people been asking you? Well, uh, they might have done, uh, but we're not there yet. You'd have to wait until there is uh, a leadership um, challenge or if there is a leadership uh, bid coming forward. And then again, I would wait to see if people mean it because there's a difference between saying it when it's a hypothetical to them saying it when it's actually happening and if there were enough people who supported me if it seemed there was a reasonable chance I would and if there weren't because people who might have said it might not then follow through and if there wasn't I wouldn't stand for it no but it sounds like it's something you're seriously considering if people felt I could and they wanted to back me I would and as I said if they don't I wouldn't okay that's my thank you